Can I have a roll call, please? Roger Jansen. Let the record reflect that Roger Jansen is not present. Nick Mihilich. Present. Tiffany David. Brian Shagless. Present. Stephen Graham. Here. Michael Cuevas. Here. David Felton. Here. Matt Cross. Present. Brack Matt Ferguson. Present. Thank you. With regard to the minutes, does anyone have any comments from the minutes from the March 13th meeting? Seeing none, may I get a motion? Motion to approve. Second? Second. Here in a second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Minutes pass. Report from City Urban Designer, Ms. Ponte. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, today I have two announcements. The first one, very important, we have a new board member. We want to welcome Mr. Uh, Brad McPherson uh, as a new um, second alternate to the board. He is an attorney currently working for Ackerman LLP with experience in real estate transactions and commercial litigation. He is a graduate uh, of the JD Florida State University College of Law and has a bachelor's in, from Sanford University. I want to welcome Mr. Uh, McPherson. Do you want to say some words? Well, it's a privilege to be here. I hope that I can contribute to the committee and look forward to being a part of it. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, the second announcement is I want to invite all of you to an event that um, Liz has put together a lot of hours to organize. We are bringing uh, to the city Lynn Richards. Uh, she is the president and CEO of the Congress of the New Urbanism. She's coming uh, next uh, April 17 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, to speak to all of us about uh, um, learn about the 25 ideas of the new urbanism. She has been invited especially to try to uh, maybe gauge interest in creating a local um, Treasure Coast uh, CNU affiliate group in the area. We, there's no chapter in the South uh, Florida area. Um, we don't think the chapter will be what we will start, but maybe an affiliate group. So we're going to have some discussions with the CNU about it. Um, and uh, it will be very interesting as a, anyway as a general uh, presentation from the CNU principles and ideas. So it's a free event, so we, you are all welcome. If you have anyone interested in attending, uh, you just need to RSVP to um, elivesque at wpb.org. The event will be held at 501 Fern Street, Suite 101 is the related offices on Fern and um, east of Rosemary behind the parking um, lot. So all welcome. Um, it will be a very um, inspiring evening. So looking forward to see all of you or some of you in the presentation. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you. As this is a public hearing, I'd ask anyone that is participating to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Continued cases. I think we have no continued cases. New cases. Ms. Levesque. Good morning. Elizabeth Levesque, Urban Design Planner for the record. This is case number PV1046D, rezoning cleanup for the Northwest Center CPDD. So this is a city initiated request to rezone the undeveloped Northwest Center commercial plan development from commercial plan district development CPDD to Northwest District 8 and Northwest District 4 as currently indicated <coughs> in the figure three sub-district boundaries of the downtown master plan. So this is approximately 4.4 acre CPDD, generally located north of 3rd Street and south of 6th Street, between Rosemary Avenue and West Railroad Avenue. There's a single parcel located at the southwest corner of 5th Street and Rosemary Avenue, and a single parcel located at the southwest corner of 4th Street and Rosemary Avenue, all within the DMP area. Just a little background, um, staff has recently performed analysis of PDs in the DMP area. Prior to 1994, the downtown area was generally grouped under city-centered districts, um, for example, CC1, CC2. 
Plan developments were permitted at this time. There were 17 approved in the current DMP area. 15 of these were built and two were never built and this includes the Northwest Center of CPDD. CPDD was approved through ordinances in 1991 and 1992. This image shows the boundaries of the PD as outlined in the ordinances. It reflects the tax maps that were active at this time. A site plan was approved for office and commercial uses. Although the site plan uh, expired in 1997, there was no clause in the ordinance that provided that the zoning changes would be repealed if the site plan expired. So the CPDD designation did remain. In 1995, the City Commission adopted ordinances which replaced Article 4, which was city center districts, with a new Article 4 entitled Downtown West Palm Beach. This prohibited new PDs, but it did exempt the existing PDs from the new DMP regulations. And the new zoning map that was approved at this time did not display the boundaries of these existing PDs. Later in 2009, the master plan was updated, um, and again, the PDs were not illustrated on the zoning maps. So staff does recognize that the PD zoning should have been removed when these PDs were abandoned. Um, so this, this rezoning is an effort to bring the area of the Northwest Center CPDD into compliance with the city's comprehensive plan and to accurately align the rezoning with current DMP regulations. Staff analyzed and found that the proposed amendment is consistent with the amendment standards of section 9432 of the ZLD, ZLDRs. Specifically, staff found that the proposed rezoning cleanup effort is consistent with policy 3.1.4D of the downtown master plan element of the city's comprehensive plan. This states that if a plan development expires or is abandoned, in this case, the properties included within the plan development will be deemed to have the FAR, building heights, and zoning for the district in which the properties are located. So the removal of this zoning will bring the properties into compliance with the city's comprehensive plan. Further analysis showed that the amendment is consistent with current um, existing land uses. The approved uses in the CPDD of office and commercial are permitted uses within NWD4 and NWD8. And so again, the proposed rezoning will officially rezone to NWD4 and NWD8, which are the districts that are currently shown on figure three. So figure three is not being updated um, and the development capacity are not changing from what is currently shown on that figure. Um, and so with that, staff is recommending approval based on the findings that the proposed rezoning complies with all of the amendment standards found in section 9432 of the ZLDRs. Thank you. Short and sweet. Was there a paragraph language that we need to read in for the approval or is it? Uh... Oh, sorry. I believe I sorry. read it. Turn... Mm -hmm. Sure, yep. Turn it to the board, Brian. Yep. Um, real fast, uh, Ms. Levike. Um, uh, DAC approved recommendation to approve the city commission on a project. What was the status of that project that was proposed on the bulk of that site? I thought that was the same site where they were doing the um, apartments. Uh, yep. Um, so, hotel apartment. We, yeah, we, we um, DAC approved. Hotel Indigo and Indigo. And, and Rosemary Residential. Correct. Um, and then there was also a loft hotel, which um, did not have to go to DAC. Right. So Hotel Indigo is actually in for building permit right now, okay. um, but they all currently still don't have site plan approval. We're still working on some traffic issues, so we're trying to get them to resubmit to engineering so we can finish that, get their site plan approval, and then get some of these Have they applied for site plan approval? Because uh, Yes. So if they have, why wasn't that addressed when they went through for site plan approval that they that, that modification be made at the same time? I, think, I understand now we're cleaning it up and it makes sense that it gets cleaned up, but their 
plan is the one that's going to be on the books? Is it going to impact their plan in terms of their intensity and densities and all, you know, there was, whatever they came in for, I'm assuming they were going in under the CPDD, and now is this going to impact them in any way? No, they, they were building um, and they were complying with the NWD4 and NWD8 regulations, okay. so they just, they developed with those regulations, so that won't change anything. Wonderful, thank you. Approval. Any other questions or comments? Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this case? No. Seeing none, I'll see if I can entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to PB case 10020. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Um, Elizabeth Levesque, Urban Design Planner, again for the record. Um, this is PB case 10020, and this is a rezoning cleanup for the Palm Beach Medical Group CPD, which is the second of the unbuilt PDs within the DMP area. So this is a city-initiated request to rezone the undeveloped Palm Beach Medical Group commercial plan <coughs> development from commercial plan development to Lofton District 10, Lofton District 4, Brelsford Park, Brelsford Park District 5, and Providentia Park District professional office as currently indicated in the figure three sub-district boundaries of the downtown master plan. So this is approximately 5.7 acre Palm Beach Medical Group CPD. It's located generally north of 6th Street, south of 9th Street, east of Dixie Highway, and west of Olive Avenue, um, and currently located within the downtown master plan, and south of 9th Street, excuse me. Um, so a lot of the background is going to be the same as my first presentation, so I'll just briefly touch on it. Um, again, we staff has performed the analysis of the DMP area. Uh, plan developments were permitted prior to 1994, 17 PDs were approved, and two of these were unbuilt, and this includes the Palm Beach Medical Group CPD. The Palm Beach Medical Group CPD was approved in 1988, it was approved for medical and pharmacy uses, and the site plan expired on November 6th, 1994, um, but similar to the Northwest, the CPD designation <coughs> did remain. In place. In 1995, Article 4, Downtown West Palm Beach, was adopted. New PDs were prohibited, um, but the PDs were exempted from the existing regulations, and the new zoning map did not show these PDs. With the update in 2009 to the Downtown Master Plan, the PDs were again not illustrated on these maps. Again, staff does recognize that the PD zoning should have been removed, um, so this will bring the properties into compliance with the comprehensive plan, and again, will accurately align with the zoning that is currently shown on, on figure three of the zoning atlas. So just to touch again on the amendment standard that if a plan development is abandoned, um, the properties will be deemed to have the development capacity of what the properties that they are located on. And this will again bring this properties into compliance with the city's comprehensive plan. Um, in this case, staff um, further analysis showed the amendment is consisting, uh, consistent with existing land uses. The permitted uses within the CPDD are permitted uses within all of the zoning districts. Current regulations do also allow residential uses, um, as the DMP does envision a more balanced mix of uses um, than was prior permitted on these sites. Um, so this amendment will actually improve the consistency of land uses with the current comprehensive plan, of the DMP goals of the comprehensive plan. So the proposed zoning again is a mix of zoning LD, 4, LD10, BPD5, and PPDPO, as currently shown on figure three of the zoning atlas. So again, these properties are not changing from what is currently shown on figure three of the zoning atlas. 
the development capacities will not change from these zoning districts um, with this amendment. This is just an effort to remove that CPD designation and officially rezone these properties to what is currently shown. Um, so in this case, with the Lofton project, again, they came in and developed according to LD10 and LD4. And with that, staff is recommending approval based on the findings that the proposed rezoning complies with all of the amendment standards found in section 94.3.2 of the zoning and land development regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Levesque. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this case? Yes, please. Please, please introduce yourself and state your name and address on the record for the microphone, please. If you can hear me. Let's go up to the mic, please. Oh, Okay. Oh. Thank you. Can you swear the testimony you're going to give to the Hope Yes, I do. I apologize for my dress code. I was out of town and I just came in, so I'm sorry. I you know, don't usually show up in a golf shirt and a pair of shorts. No problem. I've owned 318 and 316 9th Street for a long, long time, like long, 30 years. But I owned two properties on 8th Street that I they've turned into a uh, dentist office and a law office. And the only, if you could just dumb it down for me, and I just wanna make sure that the property, I own the property to the east of that big rectangle block on the top of the screen. So just to the east, I just wanna make sure that they're not gonna put anything higher than two stories. Is that correct? It's on 9th Street? Sorry, your property? Yes. Your property is on 9th Street? Yes. So the zoning, I mean, if is that one? Can you see my? See the big rectangle on the top of the screen. Is this your property? Yes. Correct. Okay. So the the zoning designation for the two properties adjacent to you on the west is Providencia Park District Professional Office. Yes, it's which been allows like that a maximum years. of two two stories. Yeah. Two stories. Okay, that's fine. I just didn't want to wake up one morning and there's a big four story parking lot right there, and then the people can't they they you know don't even get any sunlight on there. That building's been built. God, I don't know, it's old. So if that's, I don't have any, I, mean, I hope they do something with it because our, that neighborhood's been a disaster for a long time. So anything you can do, it's got, there's only one way to go, it's gotta be up. So, all right, well, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Apologize for the, no problem. <laughs> Thanks for your participation. It's Florida, we'll forgive you. <laughs> okay, turning it over to the board. Any questions or comments on this case? Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to C, code revision cases. Ms. Aponte. Good morning, Ana Maria Aponte, City Urban Designer for the record. So we're continuing with the cleanup items this morning. This is um, an exercise the city initiated request for a tax amendment to Chapter 94, Article 4, Downtown Master Plan Urban Regulations, Section 94105, Use Requirements, Table 4-2, Permitted Use Table for DMP, Section 94106, General Uses with Special Requirements, and Section 94110, Signage Requirements, correcting some Scrivener's errors that staff has found. Subject uh, changes apply to the DMP area within Commission District Number 3, Commission Richard Riles. As um, I mentioned, um, the Article 4 is the zoning code regulation for the downtown master plan. It includes uh, all the regulations necessary to guide the development of the properties within this particular area. It is a very complex document and it is amended from time to time. So staffs regularly conducts kind of reviews of the document to identify drafting errors or things that need to be adjusted. The, um, Proposal that you have in front of you today, it's basically identifying those Scrivener's errors in particular. We are working on another uh, proposed amendment to uh, correct certain things that we know are not working, little things, but the one that you are seeing today in particular is just correcting Scrivener's errors. So there are like uh, five of them. The first one is related to section 94105, use requirements, and is regarding bed and breakfast. 
Uh, bed and breakfast is a permitted use within the uh, Brestford Park District and the Northwest District, except the Brestford Park District 5, um, except for best, yes, for, so it's basically in the residential uh, districts. Um, where um, the best for uh, BMBs are permitted with certain conditions that are listed in the code as P11. Um, those conditions is basically limit the, the bed and breakfast are limited to rehabilitation of existing structures in the case of breast Breastford Park District um, residential. And within the Northwest District RC1, that is the historic core of the Northwest District, it's limited to rehabilitation of contributing structures only. So the amendment that we're presenting today is just to add a reference um, in the language that is P11 that listed basically what are the requirements of bed and breakfast. The requirements of bed and breakfast are included in the general code. So we just need to add the section that says that they are need to comply with section 9427352 that lists within other ones requirements about the number of rooms that they are allowed, uh, the condition that uh, the owner of the bed and breakfast or an employee has to live in the premise, how many parking spaces, how the rooms have to be with toilets or bathrooms uh, assigned to each of them, that how you're not allowed to have cooking facilities, all those general requirements for bed and breakfast. So we just want to, those requirements that say are in the general code, so we're just adding the section that reference in the DMP that bed and breakfast within the DMP are required to follow that one. Uh, that's all for this one. So no, the requirements are not changed or being modified, they are still the same. The second change is regarding uh, table two, permitted use table for DMP. Um, this is also a cleanup. Uh, last April uh, 23rd, 2018, the city commission approved an amendment to remove the ground floor retail uses requirement for properties fronting Clematis Street and Rosemary Avenue. Some of you were part of the board uh, back then. So as part of the amendment, we have to uh, remove the letter R from the Clematis Warefront Conservation District in particular that was in the use table. When we remove the letter R, uh, basically, we miss to put the P. So right now, the table is shown as is not permitted at all when uh, the intention is to just to show it is permitted. It's just not required. So that's just uh, a cleanup item. So we're just adding the P to clearly indicate that the retail uses are not required but are permitted definitely on, along the Clematis Waterfront District Conservation District. The third um, Correction is regarding section 94106, general uses with special requirements. The first one is regarding community centers. We're also correcting a cross reference in here. Um, the community centers are required um, to follow certain conditions that are included under the section where school civic uses and places of, of worship are. The reference for that is it has been moved from 10B to 12B. So we just want to correct the reference. The third one is regarding the medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, so you remember last year also the city went through a process and approved an ordinance allowing medical marijuana dispensaries in the city within certain districts, uh, including the downtown area. In particular for the downtown area, um, the uh, language that was included or that was presented intended to be that they were allowed um, in all the districts except the residential districts within the downtown. Um, it was also the language included for the distance requirements from school, so they cannot be within 500 feet of a school. But um, in particular, they were allowed in all the districts in the downtown except the sub-districts within residential enclave. The language, is, the language specifically says the medical marijuana dispensary shall be permitted within the urban core planning area except residential sub-districts. What happens is that language is not really clear uh, because if you see the map that we have, if you select the the map on the right shows the downtown area. We have the buffer for the schools in the downtown and then the blue color identifies the neighborhoods that are not allowed to have the medical marijuana dispensaries. Those are basically the residential uh, sub-districts. But the red, that is where the medical marijuana dispensaries will be allowed, include not only the urban core, but also the special district planning areas. So the code needs to, the, the language needs to be clarified that says that the medical marijuana dispensaries will be allowed within the urban core planning area, within the special districts planning area, and within certain districts within the residential enclave. 
So the, that are the commercial corridors within the residential enclaves. So the NWD8, NWD5, 4 and 2, and Bersford Park District 5. So the restricted neighborhoods are specifically NWDRC1, that is the core of the downtown, uh, the, the Northwest neighborhood, that is the residential, single family residential. The um, Providence, uh, this is the Bresford Park District R, that is also the residential portion, that is this neighborhood in blue. And then the <coughs> Providencia Park Professional Office and Providencia Park uh, District Residential, that is this other blue section. So we are clearly identifying the three blue sub-districts that are entirely residential <coughs> to clearly say that in, within those districts, because commercial uses are not allowed, medical marijuana dispensers will not be allowed. So that's um, the clarification. Um, the next one, uh, the last one, is in Section 94.110 signage requirements. Also on January 28, um, 2019, the city approved new regulations regarding changeable copy signs for cultural facilities. There was just a minor scrivener's error that says the maximum site for front touch should say 400 square feet and not 400 feet. So just to clarify the size. Um, that's all. Um, staff recommends approval for Code Revision 1903 as included in Attachment 2 of the staff report. The approval is based on the finding that the petition meets all eight of the requirement and standards found in Section 9432 of the Zoning and Land Development Regulation. That uh, concludes staff presentation. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on these topics? No? None? Any comment or question from the board? None? Okay, can I entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Code revision case passes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to other business, any? Uh, anyone have any other business or discussion from the board? Just had a quick question. Um, I emailed you earlier last week regarding the, um, <coughs> looks like they're doing a survey on the property between the Prado and Two City Plaza. And you said that they are looking potentially to do micro apartments on that. Are they just in the very beginning stages of that or is this something that is it further advanced and that they're complying with all current zoning on that? No, they are just in the beginnings. We met with some of the developers. I don't know if the ones that finally acquired the property are the ones that we met or not. We know that the land was uh, changed hands recently, and, but we have not received any submittal or application for any project on that site. Okay. And then also, um, we, you made a comment or I, I inquired on the uh, Cosmopolitan. I'd heard there was some new activity and it sounds like they're maybe trying to change their approval to a hotel and class A office on that parcel. The Cosmopolitan, that is, if you don't remember, this is an, uh, the project that was approved uh, 2016, I think, by the board, and they received site plan approval at the corner, is the corner of Quadro and Gardenia, include almost the entire block except the print shop. Uh, it was approved with the incentive to do offices and a hotel. It was a combination of offices, a hotel, a 25-story building. Um, we, uh, the, the property changed hands, and they just submitted yesterday for basically a revise or a new, we we're considering that, a new site plan. The office uh, use was removed, and now the project has a residential component and a hotel component. They also acquired the print shop, so they have in the entire half of block. So they just submitted yesterday. I have not reviewed the drawings, but they will be going to BBRC in uh, May, and they will have to come in front of the Downtown Action Committee sometime June, July, or something like that for the special review. They're still taking advantage of the office hotel incentive, so they will be doing a hotel component so that they will be able to go to 25 stories and use uh, transfer of development rights for their project. Thank you. Any other business? No? Well, my apologies for jumping the gun a little bit on that first case. Um, other than that, I'll go have another cup of coffee and call it adjourned. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good you. day.